Hi guys, Nikki from Nikki's Embroidery here. Come on in, join us, join us. Welcome to our video. I'm so excited to announce that this is the first video in the Color Your World series that we're hosting here at Nikki's Embroidery on Facebook. It'll also be on our YouTube channel and we'll post the links inside this post. We'll tell you how to join, how to follow. We're gonna tell you everything that's going on, all right? So first off, what? What is going on? Well, Nikki's hosting a Color Your World series where you can follow along and work with us and we're gonna help you guys develop an understanding about color theory and about how color relates to you and your world and the ways that you can learn the rules of color theory and then also learn to bend them a little bit. So that's super exciting. Um, who am I? Um, my name is Nikki Brazel. I own Nikki's Embroidery. It's located in Grovetown, Georgia. Uh, we are the largest the embroidery company in the southeastern United States. Um, I have a degree in fashion and textile design from the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, and I also have an education degree. So um, I feel qualified to give you the information I'm going to give you. Um, I want to tell you how this information is coming to you. I have a diva student who specifically requested a little bit of help with picking colors and matching colors is what she said. She said that she struggles with that. And uh, as I was looking at a way to implement a lesson for her, I started thinking it's very possible that maybe other people struggle with color theory or they're not certain about it. So I developed this series. So um, throughout the series, we're gonna, we're gonna level it out and each week we're gonna give you a part of a lesson so that you can learn to master color theory. And there's gonna be a few things that you need. They're nothing, anything major, but we're gonna go and we're gonna chat about it, okay? So let's have a little talk. Okay, so uh, one of the first things that you're gonna need is a color wheel. You probably have one at home if you sew or you paint or you quilt. Um, pretty, they're pretty inexpensive items. I think they're under $20, but what's really nice about a color wheel is they will help you see the range of colors. A lot of times they'll have a tint, tone, shade, hue, those kind of things on them. Um, I'm gonna show you a few that um, I have here. You don't need to have a dozen color wheels. Okay, let me just, you don't need a dozen of them. No one panic. Um, and you don't have to have the one that I'm showing you. All, almost all color wheels are kind of, they're, they're very similar. Okay, but I'm gonna show you some differences in these ones that I have here. And then I'll also talk to you guys about a color harmony tool. Okay, so these are, uh, this is a tool that you will need. And I would encourage you before I even talk about the color wheel, I do not want you to use a digital source so an ipad or a tablet phone anything like that the color rendering that comes off of a monitor or computer screen is very different than what you would see on a color wheel and also as you're taking this class and the, this series of videos you'll start to see that sometimes what you see on your screen is not what i'm seeing over here because of the lighting in the filming room and then of course again how the camera projects color and then also how the monitor receives that so that's why you're going to need your own color wheel okay so let's have a little chat about that all right Okay, so the first step to bat is this creative color wheel. It's kind of really neat. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna show you guys what this one looks like, okay? So this is the creative color wheel and you can kind of see that it's got the complementary, split complementary down here in the bottom. And then when you flip this over, it also has, I'm gonna spin this around so you guys can kind of see that. Can you guys see it says color theory? It gives a little lesson on color theory. And then down here, it has definitions of warm colors. And then I do like that it has the different tints. Do you guys kind of see? It's got the different shades of color. And then on the back, it talks a little bit more about different types of combinations. So monochromatic and those kind of things. Um, very affordable. I want to say this color wheel was under $20. It's from the Color Wheel Company. I'm going to bring up the JPEG again so you guys can see it. Looks just like this. It's called Creative Color Wheel. All right, it's got the front. I'm gonna show you the front. Looks like that, what you saw. And then the back looks like this. Okay, so it's double-sided. Some of them are double-sided. Pretty nice color wheel. I like it a lot. Um, I'm not gonna say you have to have that one. Again, the one you have at your house is probably perfectly fine. Don't panic, okay? All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, this one um, is interestingly enough, it's called Pocket O Color. Um, but here's an interesting thing. It's called Pocket Color Wheel. Now, mine's called A Guide to Mixing Color. See that? A Guide to Mixing Color. Can you guys see that? Um, I actually, when I went to get a JPEG off the internet so I could show you guys for this, this little video series, the only JPEG I could find was that. So I don't understand why, but I'm sure that one's exactly like this one. It's just different with the JPEG. This is, again, a, a color wheel. I kind of want to show you. This is the front and the back of it. Let me show you guys what that looks like. So you can see on the front of it, it actually has the grayscale on one side of it. Do you guys kind of see? And then it has the value, the grayscale value, how much percentage. 
And then it also, one thing that's really neat about it, I kind of, I'm going to get it to this camera so you guys can kind of see that. When you add, and I'm, I'm going to get right there. Do you guys kind of see, it actually shows you if you added gray, if you've added white, if you've added, do you see it kind of getting lighter on that or darker? Do you guys see? So this, this wheel is kind of interesting in the fact that it does that. I kind of like that. And so this one's called a guide to mixing color for amateur and professionals. Um, and I don't know, let's look and see who it's made by. Let's look at the actual JPEG so we can see. Uh, let's look. Okay. Illustration. It does have an illustration of color relationships too. I kind of like that. So, and it's printed in the USA. So that's kind of really nice. So a guide to mixing color, color wheel. All right. So I'm not saying, let me just clarify for the record. I'm not saying you have to have either of those color wheels. All I'm saying to you is that you do need some color wheel and it, it, we don't want it to be digital. Okay. Make sense? Okay, enough said about that. Now, that's a color wheel. There's also another item that I really think is kind of cool. You don't have to have it, but I just want to bring it up because it's really kind of neat. Okay, this is a color harmony wheel. It's kind of a really interesting tool as opposed to a color wheel, which also shows opposite colors and things like that. So, you know, there are primary colors and then there's clashing colors, those kind of things. A color wheel will show that. This one's just a color harmony wheel. So it's going to show harmonious colors but what's really interesting about it i think it's kind of really neat i'm going to put it on the other camera so you guys can kind of see all right so can you guys kind of see so i'm going to put it down on this pink right here pinks and purples do you guys kind of see that it's going to show the analogous colors right here and then the complementary color right there in that little cup shape and then the discord colors do you guys see where it shows that blue and that yellow that's can you guys, I really want to make sure you guys can see that. I'm going to bring it closer. Okay. Woo. Okay. There we go. Do you guys kind of see it's showing the discord colors and I'm going to flip it to a different color so you guys can kind of see that. So down here, there we go. You can kind of see which colors don't go. Do you see the discord? It's saying what is discordant colors or the colors that you might add. So I'm not saying that you can't use discord colors. I'm showing you that this color harmony will We'll show you where they're at. Okay, so that that's very helpful. It's not a color wheel. It's not a replacement for a color wheel. It's just a nice added tool. Okay, it's just a really nice added tool. And I was going to show you guys. Um, it's made. Let's see. The website is www.jilljillridder.com. www.jillridder.com. So that way you go straight to the designer and he get the she can get the proceeds for that. So you need. A color wheel you don't have to have a harmony wheel but you need a color wheel and then you're going to need something else because obviously like you're going to need more than that you can't just use a color wheel so we're going to talk about the next thing that you'd need because you're going to want to have these couple of things before the next video so color wheel get it ordered all right now let's talk about the next part of this okay you are going to need some medium so let's talk about that what do i mean by medium well an artist all artists use a medium whether it's an oil painter they use oil paint so a metal artist will use metal. So there, and of course, an embroidery artist will use thread. A quilt artist will use fabric. Starting to kind of make sense. The medium is the type of item that you use to work your art in. And that's what this is all about, um, changing your art. If you're, uh, if you're an illustrator, you probably use markers or pens or things like that. So there's many different types of mediums in the world. The color theory here applies to all. So the lessons that I'm going to teach, it really doesn't matter what your medium is. If you're an embroidery artist, I encourage you to grab all your threads. Now, let me state this for the record. This is for everyone, whether you're adding paints, whether you're going to be using thread, whether you're going to be fabric, it doesn't matter what your medium is. Listen to me. Right off the bat, we're going to pick a one color. So you don't need to get all your thread. You're just going to get all your thread in one color if you're an embroidery artist, okay? If you are a quilter, you're going to get maybe all your blue fat quarters or all your green fat quarters. Starting to make a little sense. I want to have a chat with you about this when we get real up close. You're going to want to stick with one color and all the tints and shades, okay? that This is hugely important because first you need to understand the relationship of a color to itself. So each color has its own color. Red is a prime example. And then when you add other items to it, as in white, as in gray, or as in black, you get different shades or hues. Does that make sense? So the hue is the color, red. You get different tint tones and shades by adding different things and we're going to teach you how to do that so you're you need to make sure that your medium has the opportunity to do that so with an embroidery artist it would be very very simple they're going to have lots of different shades of thread you can see behind me for a quilter same thing let's talk about it for a quilter a quilter is definitely going to have a lot of different shades of maybe the same color so this is an example of the corals 
Over here we've got some pink, so you can see that I've got lots of different variations of that. Can you guys kind of see that? And that's hugely important because we're going to teach you guys how to work with those. So if you're if you're going to be painting, painting, maybe you're a painter or an illustrator, maybe you could use your ink tense pencils. Just make sure that you've got the white and black and the blender, the highlighting pencil. Okay, chat about that. We have a little chat. So can painters participate? Yes, if you've got illustration pens or you're going to paint, um, you can definitely participate. I do want to give you guys a little hint to make this easier in case if, I don't want you to think you've got to run out and buy 40 fat quarters or, oh my gosh, I have to go get all these threads. Can I give you guys a little hint? Is something will make it easier. Um, and a little, I want to precursor this. Don't, don't bombard the same Lowe's in town or something. But I, if you will go to Lowe's or Home Depot, you can actually go to the paint aisle and get the free paint chips. And I want you to get all their paint chips, but I want you to select the color that you'll be working with. And again, I want you to choose one color. You'll note that I am working with pink, which is a derivative of red. And I'm also going to work with some corals, which is a derivative of orange. Okay, so I'm just going to be using one color to start with. We are going to add in other colors later in the series. But for the very next video, which is video two, you're going to need your color wheel and that medium. So if you go get those paint chips, you can get all the blues. So I encourage you to get about 30 to 40 chips. So some light, some medium, some medium to dark, some dark, some very dark, some almost black. Does that kind of make sense? You want to get that whole range, just like I have with this. Do you guys see how this whole range? Do you guys kind of see? I didn't, yes, I did sew all these little squares together because I had tried to pin them and it didn't work. So whatever, that's okay. Anyways, that was my folly. So you're going to need that. And, and, and even if you are going to be using your threads, um, that's perfectly fine. I was going to use threads as well. I want to make a note about the threads. Um, a lot of embroidery artists have told me that they struggle when a design calls for, you know, 40 or 50 colors or even 20 colors, maybe some floral designs. Anita Good Design has some beautiful floral designs. So it's Embroidery Library. And um, I think Daylene Stitch Artists, they have some great ones, but it, you know, it's a massive amount of threads. Sometimes there'll be 17 pinks. And a lot of people, if they don't have those exact threads, they struggle with the chart or in their embroidery machine, maybe doesn't have their brand of thread. You probably have noticed the manufacturers and distributors of sewing machines don't always have your brand of thread, which can be very frustrating. By going through this series and taking these lessons and understanding and, and applying what I'm going to teach you, you will be able to select all those embroidery threads or all the quilt fabrics you're not going to struggle any longer with understanding which colors go with which and how to shade things because nature is naturally shaded this way so you are a human being so you automatically already have an idea we're just going to kind of hone those skills a little better so you're going to need the medium um, if you are a painter I don't know that you're going to want to be mixing oil paints and stuff. You probably know more about that than I do. You may want to get the paint chips as well. If you're a quilter, maybe you really want to get your back quarters out and you just want to go to town and bring everything. That is fine with me. I don't mind at all. I'm going to be doing that as well. So let's have a little chat with what I'm going to be doing because this is how you guys are going to learn. Okay, so on the very next video, we're going to take out all this stuff. And then one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to knock out the pinks and the oranges. And I'm going to teach you guys how to see the variations in shades and how to use the color wheel to first identify the color that you're working with. Because a lot of times people think they're working with a blue and they're working with a blue green or yellow blue. And that's what starts the problem for them. And that's what I want to give you those skills so that you understand how color works and so that you can make it work for you. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? So I'm going to have all my fabric out and we're going to first video we're just going to start i'm going to show you guys how to start separating those you're going to do the same with your paint chips so i want to give you a little tip if you're using the paint chips if you're using the paint chips and you happen to get the ones that have like the four color blocks i want you guys to cut those up and just put them all in a bowl okay so you know what I think we're all going to use paint chips. I'm going to go down and get some as well. I'm going to go to Lowe's tonight. Um, and what I want us to do is that'll be easier. I'm going to, of course, have the fabrics as well out because I, I want my sewist to kind of see something about shade and angle with grain. But I think for most people, maybe get the paint chips as well. Just it might be easier. Sometimes thread rolls around. So I'm just thinking as far as what would be easy. So whatever you think will be easier. When? When will I need this? When will I need these things? Well, we're not get this video is going to post today and Friday, um, February 15th. And so it's going to post this evening, evening and we're going to give you about a week and a half to get gather your things. Now, does it matter if you don't quite have it when it gets here? No, because this is very likely the next video will post every Friday for the next four weeks. This will be the first one. So what if you don't have your item the first time? 
That's okay, don't panic, because the videos are gonna be stored here on my Nikki's Embroidery Facebook page, and then I'm also gonna speak with them about putting it on our YouTube channel, and we'll put a link. So if you go to my Nikki's Embroidery page, and if you will choose like, you'll automatically follow. Now, there is one request I'd make of you, I would, I would make of you, I would ask of you. Would you please, if you could, share the video to maybe someone who may need some help with color theory, maybe is not certain about, because this works for everything. If you're buying a house, if you bought a house, Maybe you're somebody who's unsure about paint colors. This will give you the authority to understand how color affects our world because we're gonna go into that very deeply and we're gonna learn how to control color in our world. So um, definitely I would encourage you to share it with anyone. Um, my goal is to gain a few followers but my ultimate goal is for them to benefit. So I, I want to be upfront and honest with that because I always cannot stand it when someone asks for likes or shares or follows on a video. It's always... I don't care for it, but I will tell you this, I am taking an online video production class, um, but it is a college level course, and I'm required to state my goal, and so I am an honest person. So I have two goals. My dual goal here is to teach color theory, and then also I, I do have to do that for my, for my professor, and so I, it's required part of the series. So I hope that the video works well, and I hope I do well, because it has a twofold uh, benefit, which is a benefit to me, benefit to you, I hope. and uh, of course, please, you don't have to choose like or follow or like if you don't like us. That's, I'm not going to take that personally, but I would hope that you did. And then, of course, by sharing, maybe we can expose other people to color theory and how it affects their world. And then, of course, just, just for fun just for fun. It's cold outside and I hope that we can add a little bit of joy to your day. Um, we're going to go to our next camera and I want to show you some different things that you that may benefit you. Okay, hang on, let's go. Okay, so the first thing I want to mention to our embroidery artists, I want you guys to kind of take a real close look at this truck. This this broke me to do this. I mean, I'm not joking. This just really broke me, and I'm going to really bring this up there. You guys can kind of see that the coloring on this is really, really, really poor. Can you guys really see that? And so that's intentional. Uh, the problem with this is this the incorrect shading on the truck. And uh, that's due to not having that knowledge base. So um, what do I mean? Well, I mean that... Um, I asked someone to pick some colors for this truck and I didn't give a whole lot of direction. I just said, you know, the, the shading and the things that you're seeing on the screen are um, the shades so that you would see a truck sitting out in the sun. And of course, you can see that if you look real close, I'm going to really get up close. It's not terrible, but it could be 100% better. It could just be 100% better. So, um, and that's our goal is so that you can feel good about the color. So that, that, that that's one of the things. Now, let's have a little other chat about how this is beneficial, okay? All right, how many of you end up having to buy a lot of these like mixed gradations of fabric because you're unsure how to do the grady, you know, to grade your fabric yourself and add it in a stack? You guys can kind of see this is a whole stack of greens, very beneficial. And then here's a whole stack of orange, so you can kind of see that. Now, so if even if you don't sew, I want to mention this next thing to you. I kind of want to point out this fabric right here. You guys kind of see that floral. I'm going to flip it upside down so you guys can kind of see that. And you can note those greens that are matching to that fabric. I'm going to have a chat with you in the coming days about the right shade and about adding pop. Because sometimes it's not always about making it match. Sometimes it's about making it pop. And so if you're too matchy, you might be finding yourself dissatisfied with your color selections as well. So it may, may not be that you don't know how to match or you don't know which colors blend. You might be to blending and you might need a little little extra pop so we're going to recap what do i need you need your color wheel get your color wheel ordered or run down to wherever i i think like hobby lobby i think all the major craft stores i think most quilt stores i think everyone should have a color wheel but after my recent experience at best buy when they just didn't even have one hdmi camera or cable in the whole store I found that it's possible you might need a little extra time. So we're giving you a little bit of extra time so that you can get your color wheel in case if you live in a town where there isn't a color wheel, which is possible because I live where there's no HDMI cables. You have to order them online. So you might live there. And then also a chance for you to run down to Lowe's. Now listen, if you live local, don't go to Lowe's before I get there. I have like 20 minutes. Don't. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Go down to Lowe's. Go to the Home Depot. Go get the paint chips. Um, be polite. Don't 
don't take stacks and stacks of every one. Select from each shift going down because there's going to be other people who will want them. And then cut those apart. So you're going to want that. And then you're going to want to get just like a little bowl. And you're going to need a space. When we go to do this, you're going to, you're going to want to take your tablet or be in the living room, coffee table. You're going to need somewhere to lay things out. So if you're not using the paint chips and you're using thread, you're going to need an area. You can't just hold your medium in your lap. You're really going to be doing work. So it's going to be a class. Um, it's going to be exciting, I hope. Um, we're going to allow you to ask questions. So here's, here's the time you were waiting for. On this post in the comment section, if you have a question that you would like answered in next week's video, all you've got to do is type it out. And if you'll tag me, Nikki Brazel, what does that mean, tag? Just type out my name, N-I-C-C-I-B-R-A-Z-Z-E-L-L, -L, with a question. Now, here's the thing. I don't gather all the questions, so please make sure it's one that we didn't cover in the video, because if we did, they'll probably just skip through it, and they'll go to one that we didn't cover. So if you have a specific color theory question, or if you have a question about color, or if you don't even know what color theory means, We'll help you out. We're, we're in it to win it, and we're going to do this whole color play series, and it's going to be fun. Now, my last request is that you would hashtag any, any pictures you sling to us or any comments or anything, or even when you share this post, if you could hashtag, which is the number symbol, color your world. We're going to color our world, and we're going to make sure that we share that with other people so that other people get the benefit of understanding color psychology and theory, and they can feel super excited about their art, and they don't have to guess about colors anymore. That really, truly is my main goal. I don't want people to have to guess. I want them to feel confident, and I want them to feel confident that they can break the rules and that but you first have to understand the rules. That way you can break them. Don't forget, get your color wheel, get your medium. Don't take all the chips, leave some for somebody else, but you're gonna need about 40. Meet me back here next Friday, and I'm so excited. We're gonna start our class. Go gather up your stuff, get excited, tell your family there's no dinner Friday night. Um, if you're not the one who cooks, that's fine. Order takeout, but we are delving deep. Get your stuff ready, guys.